Welcome to the Q&A for April 2023. You guys have questions, I have answers. So let's get into it. The first question we have comes from Navethes. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, and they ask, what was your first experience with shooters, and what was your motivation to start making content about them? Well, in terms of first experience with shooters, I've been playing for years and years and years and years. I don't even know what it would trace back to. Maybe Star Wars Battlefront 2, the original, on the Xbox? Probably, but I think it might go back even further than that. But when it comes to first-person shooters, the first first-person shooter that I was really interested in was Battlefield 2 and I really, really wanted that game. Eventually I got it, and uh, I had a ton of fun with it. But obviously I wasn't making YouTube content or anything when I was a kid. So when it came to making content on first-person shooters, that came around after I was playing a ridiculous amount of Escape from Tarkov, and it was COVID, so I wasn't really doing anything. And I'd always sort of wanted to try to make videos, but I just wasn't sure how to go about it or even where to start. So I just kind of hail married it, to be honest. I was just like, you know what? Let's throw out some videos and I'll get better with time. And I think that's exactly what happened. It was just on the whim of I enjoy playing and I hope that I can share my enjoyment with other people. Next question is from Lox Gay, and they ask, will you make more videos like the teaching you how to read and stuff? That was fun as hell, and I wish you would make more. Thank you. When it comes to the teaching people how to read video, that was mostly a one-off. I don't really plan on making anything more like that, especially because the actual making of that video was just a total dumpster fire. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't make a script, I just sort of guessed. I put it together all in one afternoon. It just sort of happened. And the creativity required to just ad-lib and go for it is not something that I tend to have, so it's almost a wonder that that video even exists to begin with. Improv is not really my forte, which is part of the reason that I think my streams never do nearly as well as my videos. It's just a lot easier to entertain someone in a video when I have the power of editing but when it comes to recording something like the how to read video, I need to have an idea of what I'm going to do or say before I do it. And that's just such an outlandish, stupid concept that wasn't even my idea. It was an idea of a friend of mine. So yeah, I, I don't know. I wouldn't count on ever seeing anything like that again, or at the very least, not anytime soon. Triz asks, do you have any plans for the new Subnautica series? I'm not even gonna read the rest of that. Uh, but what it comes down to with Subnautica is it's still on almost indefinite hiatus because I still don't know how I'm gonna go about doing it. I still don't know if I want to do weekly episodes. I still don't know if I want to do just one or two videos for the whole game. I really genuinely just don't know. And it certainly isn't helped by the fact that coming forward in literally one day as I'm recording this, Jedi Survivor is going to come out, and then like two weeks from now, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is going to come out. So those games, when it comes to single player, will be occupying my time. On that topic, Atari Gamer 99 talks exactly about Fallen Order. They ask if I'm going to be playing the sequel on stream tomorrow, uh, which by the time you've seen this, you'll know that that's not true. I I'm not going to be playing it on stream, and I won't even have a stream on, on Friday, but you'll have already known that because that will be over by now. As it stands, I'm currently planning on playing the game for pretty much the entirety of Friday, maybe putting a video together for it, I don't know. And then if it's topical and I can get it out fast enough, it'll go out on Monday and you'll have already seen it. But if not, then Wednesday it is. But yes, I do want to get a video out on the game and I do want to play it, uh, but you know what, we'll see. Sal Show says, how do you feel about the current state of video games slash gaming? It can be fun from time to time, but it gets boring and I wanted your opinion on it. Modern gaming is a bit of an odd landscape because in some ways we've got it a whole lot worse, but in some ways we've got it a whole lot better. So honestly, it's almost a little bit hard to tell. I've been through a fair amount of gaming ages in my life and I can comfortably say that the one we're in right now is by no means the worst. Battle passes and live service is not the best, but it's a hell of a lot better than locking basically the entirety of a game's DLC content behind random loot boxes. 
thank God that there was a bunch of legislation and stuff to stamp out the loot box era of gaming because that was the lowest of the low and I don't think it will ever get as bad as that. It can, but I would be pretty surprised. That being said, the live service battle pass age of gaming certainly is not the ideal. It should be, but it isn't. The reality of the day is that in previous years with paid DLC, you got a hell of a lot more content than you do nowadays. And I mean, logically you would think that makes sense. Of course you get more content because you paid for it. The developers are making more money, right? But then that isn't even necessarily true because with the introductions of all of these different game editions and all of the microtransactions that are jammed into games nowadays, the games industry is making more money than they were before when they're writing out paid DLC. So we're now getting content trickled down to us, we're getting less of that content, and the games industry is making more money. That makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? Well, when it comes to capitalism, it does, but when it comes to being a gamer, damn, it sucks. I hesitate to say that the age of paid DLC, especially for multiplayer games, was just strictly better because it did split the player base. I think the ideal is to have a game that's supported by its microtransactions, has free content, but the game actually gets content. The catch is, the games industry isn't going to do that because the current state of things makes them plenty of money and they don't need to put as much time into actually making stuff for people to play with. So how's the state of the games industry? Well, it's not great, but it could be a whole lot worse. Freak Show Gaming asks, Hello Equips, bit of a weird question, but what is your opinion on turn-based games, like traditional Pokemon or Chrono Trigger? I've never seen any turn-based content on the channel, so most likely you do not enjoy it too much, but I would like to hear your full opinion on it. Well, you were right about me not really liking turn-based strategy games, so you got me there. That kind of game just isn't able to hold my interest most of the time. The thing about turn-based combat games is that I feel like they're almost entirely held up by everything that isn't their main gameplay, and that almost feels like it speaks for itself. Things like mini-games and the story carry a lot of these games, and the actual gameplay is just sort of there. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that enjoy the day-to-day -day gameplay when it comes to these games, I'm just not one of them. I'd rather have complete control of my character and actions rather than relying on random chances to hit and memorizing tables of weaknesses and stuff like that. Our next question is from Funny Bait Name, and they say, Do you plan to play the new Arcane Odassi update and give your review on it? Also, how do you think the balance is between different classes? Might need to work on your Odyssey spelling, but other than that, no, I don't really plan on playing any more Arcane Odyssey as of this moment. I just don't know why I would log in. I've pretty much finished the entirety of the game when it comes to the story. The PvP just looks absolutely horrendous, so I don't know why I would go back. I don't really have any reason to. I know they had an update, I don't really know what's in it, and quite frankly I just don't care to check. I don't know what else to say. I've just got things that I'm far more interested in doing than heading back to this game, so if you were looking forward to anything Arcane Odyssey related, I'm going to disappoint you. Next up is from Clueless Tobes. Do any FromSoft games interest you? Ah! Maybe a Dark Souls or Bloodborne playthrough? Ah! I've already played Dark Souls. Uh, I played through the entirety of Dark Souls 1, most of Dark Souls 2, I've given the Dark Souls rant like 15 times on my stream. I'm just sort of tired of saying it, so I'm sorry uh, if I'm not going to give it to you here. Maybe that's a video, honestly. Maybe I should make a video on, on FromSoft games as a whole. That would be interesting to make. Uh, but short answer, no. I don't like FromSoft games. Uh, slightly longer answer, they're ruined by their community uh, when I played them, and they're extremely overrated. Moving on. Evan asks us, Hey Eclipse, have you thought of playing VR games or getting a VR headset? And the quick and concise answer to this one is, I've not thought about playing any VR games and I've not really ever considered getting a VR headset. And that mostly stems from the fact that I don't feel like the medium for VR is quite there and I don't know if it ever will be. VR as a concept 
seems like it could be really cool, but when it comes to execution, to me it just looks incredibly jank. I don't know how else to put it than that. Whether it be teleporting around the room, because that's how you prevent motion sickness, I think, or the fact that you can just like clip your hands or head through 80% of the things in the game, because again, if you couldn't do that, then you would get sick and throw up or it would break the game. Just all sorts of jank. VR is just so much jank. Uh, and that's just, I don't know, it, it doesn't really appeal to me. And the final question, if you had to give the major JoJo Roblox games a rating out of 10, what would they be? The question that everyone's always thought, how would the JoJo games stack up out of 10? And they all get a zero! Oh.